Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're playing an Unlimited Havencraft deck because I found this Tenko Shrine deck and I really wanted to give it a go. Why? Because Tenko Shrine is probably one of my favorite cards when it comes to most decks, especially with a decent healing focus. And this one really isn't clunky at all. I expected it to play really awkwardly and I had seen a deck fairly similar to this if you've watched some of my older videos in the last probably month or so. But we did actually face a deck very, very similar to this with the Holy Bowman Keel and the Tankos and the Pegasus Sculptures and I was really wondering what this deck was and I eventually found the deck list so why not we get right into the video and check it out. So the first thing I'd like to say is that this deck can really take a beating and I mean really take a beating. You can easily gain 20 health in a couple of turns if you get a half decent hand and you can pretty much keep your health at 20 the entire game while pinging off every single one of your opponent's cards very quickly and effectively. The deck is also extremely cheap running no legendaries and only topping out really at gold cards with a reasonable amount of those I would suppose. Like if you don't have them of course it might be a little expensive in that regard but it is cheap with no legendaries. The gold is only 800 vials, whereas legendary being 3,500 is a very, very big margin. So starting off very strong with Ekronium, I really hate pronouncing that card, and double Tenko Shrine, so really looking optimistic so far. You do have to take a little bit of damage to really get into this, especially from turn 1 through 4. Once you eclipse turn 4, you can really start dealing with your opponent's cards extremely effectively. This shadow player just kind of playing the board with their reanimate shadow. My guess would have been uh, initially an Atomy deck, possibly, but it looks like they probably aren't running that. And if they are, they got a very poor draw, but they still give me a good run for my money being very aggressive. Trying to get as many cards as they can. Of course, with these set up, we do randomly remove a follower each turn for the next couple of turns, which is a decent way to protect yourself while you set up these Tenkos. So the Tenko Shrine, at least one setup, we should be able to pretty much immediately follow up with a second one of those pretty quickly. Especially since their board isn't super threatening yet. So we are going to lose one of these followers. I haven't played any evolves yet. It's another thing I found with this deck. I haven't really had to use any evolves, which is really great. So going into turn six, we're looking very positive. We have Happy Pig, Hat Rabbit, and Mosaic, which gives us the potential to just absolutely decimate the board. We probably aren't going to need that, but it is great to have that there as an option. So we do have Black Inscription though, which could be quite decent. We are at 10 health, which is a little bit dangerous, but we can heal that up extremely quickly. So we go for the Healing Angel play. Removes at least two of these. Mosaic Holy Water, draws a card, gets us another couple health, and also allows us to set up this globe. We're not really worrying about board space much because we're only really playing one to two followers a turn at most. Most of the time I tend to stick to one and rely on spell power mostly, with things like Pegasus Sculpture being absolute chaos for our opponent to deal with. So Pegasus Sculpture, definitely a card you want to get out when you have two Tankos, it's absolutely amazing. And Rabbit Healer, pretty decent way to pick off a couple of these zombies. Especially when we have Black Inscription as an immediate follow up to that. So we are going to get 4 damage to the face, which is going to start our face damage race, where we can just beat them down with pure face damage. Of course, Underworld Watchman, not too surprising. That card was pretty expected from our opponent. Of course, I don't really want to give them any value, but at this point, I also don't really mind that much, especially if it's only one. So if they're only getting one out of this, I don't mind, and I can hold on to my decree because I don't want to use it on just a single follower like this in the spot we're in now. We're already back up to 18 health. So them getting one health really didn't worry me. I'd rather favor getting the white diamond. So Sidwin, that's going to be their first part of their reanimating stuff. I mean, that works really well. So it looks like they're doing an Underworld Watchman reanimate instead, which isn't a bad option. I mean, it's a great alternative. They're just they're going up against the wrong kind of deck, especially since now we can wipe all three of these out very, very quickly, and even set up a second Pegasus Sculpture for eight damage at the end of every turn for at least the next two turns. So that's a lot of damage to take at the end of every turn. So 
so so death three blythe still trying to regain of course we have pure annihilation which is the perfect removal to this honestly there's no way we really lose this now i mean with the healing we're gonna get this turn which is basically guaranteed we've got at least two decent heals plus the pegasus sculptures that's going to be lethal this deck was surprisingly fun to play as well, so I highly recommend giving it a shot. As it's definitely enjoyable when you have Tenko just going off. So next is Dragon. Dragon was a deck that worried me just a little bit more because I know they have a lot of strong late game cards and this deck isn't particularly super fast. Once you get the setup you're pretty safe but getting that setup is the hard part. Especially finding a dead turn to play Tenko Shrine it can be difficult. Although turn 4 isn't a bad spot to play it. And you can at least set up some potential early game if you want to play Pegasus Sculpture and lose a turn off it. Which I don't recommend, but it's definitely a possibility, so we get our Tenko Shrine again. There was one more game that I actually won that I didn't show you guys, only because they literally conceded turn 3 after I played um, pretty decent cards up to that point. So getting these out in order like this is perfect. Having double Pegasus Sculpture is decent, although using them now is a little more awkward because you've pretty much got to spend a turn to play them. My turn 3 though, we can kind of go for a setup with Happy Pig. So why not use Happy Pig and Globe together and we get our third Pegasus Sculpture. So we're going to be absolutely flooding the board with those Pegasus Sculptures when it comes to it. And anything they play next turn is going to be pretty much dead very very quickly with this hand. So one Tenko Shrine gets dropped on empty board, basically the ideal time to play it. Our opponent gets their Moon and Sun out. This is one that I really didn't like having to play against, mainly because I didn't want to use my pure on it, but at the same time I felt like I probably should have. So I can get my Abbey Pig out now, no real risk to it, just play it out, it can just sit there. We've got one Pegasus Sculpture out which means, you know, we can deal some damage when we need it. And we get a draw next turn, so why not? We also have plenty of clears with the Decrees. And a Matarasu, really not a problem for us. It's going to be pretty easy to remove and hoping that that was the same Moon and Sun that we just saw a minute ago, I decided to go with the Pure Annihilation, remove it, have it, have it be done, don't have to worry about any more of those blocking my board up and stop them from just gaining absolute Lindworm value. Fortunately, they have another Moon and Sun, so unless I can draw into another Banish, it's not going to be much good to just have to banish them, I guess. But I mean, we can work with this. A Decree removes the 5-5, it allows us to get at least 2 damage to the face off the Sculpture, which I will settle for at this point because we do have a lot more coming up after that. So there is Dragon Emissary into Dragon Forte, great, so with that with an Evolve is always going to be fun. Of course I do need to remove this as effectively as I can. Don't really think about it too much, but I do decide to kind of just throw the Rabbit Healer out. I probably should have went with Mosaic Water and Jeweled Priestess instead of going with these Pegasus Sculptures like I did, but I wanted to have the Pegasus Sculptures set up in the following turn, so not the correct play because like Cannon for Sword, Tenko Shrine will only hit once if there is a follower on board. It will not hit face if there is a follower that can be hit first, so if there is a follower on board and it dies, you won't get extra shots on face. You've got to have either the face completely available or have the board enough damage to really make value out of it. So in this case we're actually going to do quite well. The Decree will be able to remove this very easily and we can pretty much just go for a nice white diamond play again. Setting up draw power. We've got a couple of Mosaic Holy Waters which are going to give us a couple more bursts of damage and having a 1-2 on board isn't really a problem for me. So with the Mosaic Holy Waters and the Double Pegasus, that is 8 damage to the face on its own. Especially since we could Decree as well. Of course they go Altered Fate, which isn't great because it does mean they're going to get a good amount of damage to my face. And they were probably going to hope for a Double Decree, uh, sorry, Double Discard off those, but they didn't. Unfortunately I had two sort of miss lethal here, which I'm a little, little disappointed by. 
If I had have thought this out a little better, I would have evolved my follower, went face, used the... Sorry, would have, yeah, went face, used the decree, and then double mosaic holy warded, and then ended for Pegasus damage, which would have been lethal that turn. So I definitely missed the ball on that one. Not that it made a crucial difference, because I mean, for them to now kill me, especially with the deck they're running, is going to be fairly difficult. So I was a little disappointed that I did mess that up, but I mean, it still worked out, just not quite as easily as it could have. So there is the concede. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, I certainly did. I do enjoy playing these decks, they are great fun when you have something like this come out, especially when it is as cheap as it is. I mean, yes, you do have quite a few golds. We've got at least, I mean, 9, oh, 12, 12 golds. I mean, that's not bad, but it is still a lot for some new players. But this deck seems to do well in Unlimited if you are just looking to gain points or just in general complete submissions I think this is a lot of fun and if you are just looking to have some enjoyable games I recommend playing this deck it seems to hold its own quite well and I would highly recommend it so hit that like button subscribe for more content you'll find the deck list in the description below and I'll catch you guys next time see ya